It gets pretty lonely at the top. In fact, it's probably terrifying if you're sitting at the top of the Roman Empire. Almost two-thirds of Roman emperors met a violent death. By these odds, a Roman gladiator was more likely to survive amphitheater combat than an emperor was to reach old age in peace. To protect themselves and stamp their authority, many of the 77 to 100 Roman emperors were renowned for cruelty, torture, and rampaging bloodlust. Intimidating and destroying enemies was a continual show of force from Rome's emperors. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine the unspeakable acts Roman emperors secured their power with. Being the ruler of ancient Rome was as desirable as it was troublesome. Being emperor meant an entirely unsafe existence with no roadmap for success. Even your personal security, the Praetorian Guard, could overthrow you. Heck, they might even try to sell your throne to the highest bidder. See Emperor Julianus, 192 AD. But hey, it's not like this was a position that launched one into a life of easy luxury. Come 66 days later, Julianus would be stabbed by one of his own soldiers. This was Rome. This was how it worked. There were many attempts to build a succession plan in the event of the emperor dying, but none came to pass. Unlike a lot of the emperors. In a society where murder, slander, rape, poisoning, and conspiracy were all part of the landscape and violence was entertainment, emperors would go to remarkable lengths to display their power against their enemies and Rome's. For all the heinous and barbaric cruelty displayed by Rome's emperors, the most infamous of all these despots is without a doubt Caligula. His reign from 37 to 41 AD as the third emperor of Rome is regarded as starting nobly before descending into insane excess. Caligula, by many written accounts, considered himself a god walking the earth who became renowned for a perverse appetite for blood, cruelty, and wanton sexuality. Writings from Seneca the Younger and Suetonius depict Caligula as someone who would kill for his own amusement. One account depicts Caligula bored and displeased at the Colosseum, so he had half the audience chucked into the arena by his guards during intermission. For the lions and beasts in the arena below, dinner's up! Free roaming cruelty was Caligula's verve. He's alleged to have had two Roman consuls killed simply for forgetting his birthday. It is written Caligula would regularly have trials by torture that he would watch while eating. There can be no doubt the third emperor of Rome had a bent of sadism very few of us could imagine. He would purposefully murder opponents over days. He would cut off tongues. He would murder children and make their families watch. More than one account links Caligula to torture where people were sawed in half, their spinal cord filleted from chest to crotch. Caligula was also famed for turning his palace into a brothel to the eyes of all outsiders. He was not only accused of incest with his sisters, but of prostituting them to others as well. Caligula was renowned for sleeping with men's wives, brazenly, even betting them on their wedding nights, and speaking publicly about such transgressions. Quite amazingly, Caligula was encouraged towards hedonistic sexuality and pronounced cruelty, in the hope it would soften his appetite for them. Yeah, it appears that didn't really work. Even the emperors of Rome were not immune to something of a rotted family tree. The cousin of Caligula, Emperor Nero, is point in case. Somehow regularly depicted as an even more hedonistic, cruel, and maniacal man than his uncle, it appears Nero had a similar vision of how to ensure his power, force, fear, and public acts of degradation. Narcissism appears pretty rampant during Emperor Nero's reign, to put it mildly. At one point, he spent astronomical amounts to build a 100-foot-high statue of himself and named it Colossus Neronis. Great public self-tributes were not the only way Nero expressed his presence, import, or power. Nero, by the records, had quite the appetite for murder of his own family. The emperor murdered his stepbrother, beheaded his wife, and organized for his mother to be stabbed to death. Classy. As if this wasn't jaw-droppingly extreme enough, in what Roman history labeled a casual outburst of rage, Nero allegedly kicked his pregnant lover, Papia, to death. 
Clearly not the most uplifting or happy of souls, Nero reigned as emperor from 54 to 68 AD before taking his own life, having been declared a public enemy. In 64 AD, as the Great Fire of Rome raged, Nero took it upon himself to place the blame for the fire firmly on the Christians throughout the realm. As seemed past time normalcy for these emperors, Nero was to take the grimmest possible retribution on them. Many were executed after being ravaged by dogs, some were boiled alive in oil, many were thrown to the lions, and some were even made into human torches. If you wanted to see a flex from a Roman emperor, if you wanted to witness the man at the top exercising his power for all to see, look no further than the Roman persecution of Christians. It didn't take much for a Christian to get on the wrong side of Rome. The list of offenses a Christian could commit was multifold. If you didn't recognize the Roman gods, if you gathered in secret, if you refused to honor Caesar, you were likely on the menu for the lions of the Colosseum. For the record, this wasn't just a long hot summer or a bad year. The persecution of Christians lasted for four centuries. Emperor Nero, Marcus Aurelius, Decius, Trebonianus Gallus, and Emperor Valerian all conducted mass, widespread persecutions of Christians. Damnatio ad bestias was the Roman practice of throwing convicts and criminals to feed animals. While previous epochs had examples of doing the same in Carthage, Asia, Libya, and Egypt, the Roman rendition was unique. What started as a ritual to please the gods was soon popularized into a wholly accepted form of public entertainment. Once a popular part of Roman life, dangerous wild animals were brought to Rome's Colosseums to maul and devour people. Many of these individuals would be Christian, commonly stripped of all their clothing before being tied to a column. Bulls, leopards, tigers, and bears, oh my, were all brought to the amphitheaters for this purpose. Cicero declared witnessing an instance where one lion mauled over a hundred convicts on the arena floor. There's one way to make sure the audience goes home happy. Many Roman emperors were canny in their understanding of public image. Many made sure that public displays of torture were as much of a spectacle as possible. Both Emperor Hadrian and Emperor Domitian take the award for the greatest spectacle of torture and more so, they achieved it with the Roman norm of torturing Christians. Both emperors employed the brazen bull as their choice of spectacle torture for these sworn heretics of Rome's polytheistic faith. Born in ancient Greece, the brazen bull was a form of torture only as elaborate as it was horrendous. A life-size hollow bull made entirely of bronze would be constructed with a door in its side. Convicts would be locked inside the hollow bulb before it was heated from a fire set beneath it, essentially roasting the person inside till their death. This ghastly and brutal death was exacted by Emperor Hadrian on St. Eustace, as well as his wife and children. It's written that St. Antipas faced the same in 92 AD, and in 287 AD, Pelagia of Tarsus is believed to have gained his martyrdom the same way. Talk about cooking up a reputation. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.